Hello again everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about creatine and why I think vegans and vegetarians should supplement with creatine. Um, just real quick, if you watched our other videos, you know that we don't just get on here and shamelessly um, plug supplements. So that's not at all what this is intended to be. Whether you buy it from us or not is, is not important here. Um, so I want to cover the reasons why I think it's important for, non, uh, for vegans and vegetarians to supplement with creatine. First and foremost, creatine is uh, vegetarian, vegan safe because it's not, there's, I'm not aware of any animal source raw material in terms of creatine. It may exist, but I'm not aware of it. Um, specifically, Creapure, which is the trademarked um, you know, form of creatine monohydrate that you can find in a lot of supplements. It's made from non-animal source raw material, so it's completely vegetarian safe. So that's number one. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and also, I want to make clear that I'm not here to try and talk people out of being a vegan or vegetarian, so please don't take it that way. I completely respect it, so I just want to get that out of the way right now. Um, so I just want to talk about why it would benefit people. So we know that vegetarians have a lower plasma level of creatine. It's a blood plasma level, about 40 to 50 percent lower than non-vegetarians. Um, and that makes sense because yes, our body does make it with endogenously. We do make some creatine. But those of us who are non-vegetarians get the rest of our creatine from animal sources. We're talking fish and meat and a small bit from uh, milk. So even if you're a lacto-vegetarian, you're still going to be relatively low in creatine because if you're not eating meat and fish, um, you're still going to be lacking. So that's the main source uh, outside of the body. Now, the other thing to consider is when we're talking about endogenous synthesis of creatine, it puts a demand on your body, um, specifically for um, uh, as adenosyl methionine, or SAMe for short. Now, that's a really, really important methyl donating compound that modulates homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is associated with cardiovascular and atherosclerosis. Athrosclero um, cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. Those are two things that, when uh, homocysteine are, levels are elevated, that your risk goes up for those two things. So, SAMe is a really, really important compound because, again, it can modulate that homocysteine. It can help bring down those levels or bring them to a nice homeostatic level. Um, creatine is the most demanding on SAMe, it's the most demanding process on SAMe within your body. Now, other things also play a role, and it's kind of like a double whammy when we're talking about non-vegetarians, because deficiencies in methionine, folate, and vitamin B12, all common amongst uh, vegetarians and, and vegans, can also put a demand on SAMe levels as well. Because a study that was done, for instance, on vitamin B12 found that 68% of vegetarians, 83% of vegans, are deficient in vitamin B12 specifically compared to just 5% of non-vegetarians. So it's really, really, really important that, number one, you, a, I would supplement with B12 if you're non-vegetarian, but that's not what this video is about. If you do, I recommend a sublingual one so you bypass the GI tract where intrinsic factor doesn't come into play for absorption. Um, and it is a myth, by the way, that plant sources are in fact sources of vitamin B12, whether they're talking about seaweed, fermented soy. Those are analogs of B12, not actual B12, so I do recommend supplementing with some form of B12 um, if you are in fact in this category, vegan, vegetarian. Now, in addition to what I mentioned, the demand on SAMe from endogenous production, obviously supplementing it is going to take away from that demand on your body. So, you know, that SAMe, that molecule can actually modulate homocysteine without having to worry about creatine production because you're taking it from an exogenous source. You're replacing what you're not getting in from your diet. But other you know, things that creatine help with are also neurological benefits. Um, in fact, there was a survey done, it's based on a survey data, so take that for what it's worth on vegans and vegetarians, and it's basically that they're more susceptible to depression and anxiety. And, and that's not just because of creatine, it's also choline and carnitine and other things that we know play a key role in, um, in neurological function. But, creatine does play a key role in that. So that's another reason why I recommend it. Also, independent of performance enhancing benefits, and we have videos that go in depth on that. I'll link them below if you guys are interested in those. Um, just supplementing with creatine will get your body up to a normal level. So you can get into homeostasis, you can have that balance, you can take that uh, demand for endogenous production off your body. Um, if you are interested in the performance enhancing benefits, we have the video where we talk about it in depth. So I recommend checking that out. There's two of them that I'll post below. Uh, one of them specifically covers that directly. And sometimes I'll hear from people, well, I'm a non-responder. Well, creatine non-responders are, one, described by having a lower initial level of creatine in, in muscle tissue. So we know that, hey, that's going to cover, so the intramuscular level is going to be lower. Well, that's non-vegetarian. You're going to have a lower initial level, like we talked about, a 50% less than a uh, non-vegetarian. Um, they also have a high percent 
of type 2 muscle fiber. That's your explosive muscle fiber. There's a higher percent of your muscle tends to be that way if you're a responder. Talking about performance enhancement. Um, greater, uh, cr uh, greater fiber cross-sectional area and also uh, more just more fat-free mass. Okay? Those are the people who tend to respond best in terms of performance enhancement to creatine. Now this is not necessarily for those that, like I said, just getting your levels up to normal. That's for the performance enhancing benefits. So for those of you who maybe have taken it in the past and expected the, and you've done it consistently, you know, we've taken about five grams a day, um, and I'll, in that other video it is covered in depth about the dosing, and you've not received those, uh, realized those performance enhancing benefits, well that may be why maybe you weren't working out enough at that time or maybe other things like that, but at a minimum, I would take it again to get back up to that normal level. Um, you know, as far as testing and things like that, the IOC considers creatine food, so nothing to worry about there. Um, and like I said, I'll link a vid below um, that goes in depth about dosing, other questions you may have about bloating and other myths that come up with creatine. So just to summarize, um, vegans, vegetarians, I'm sure you probably know about the other nutritional things I talked about with vitamin B12, methionine, things like that. There's, you know, lots of other ways now to be able to improve those um, nutrients in your diet, but sometimes creatine gets overlooked because it's thought of, oh, it's just this, uh, you know, muscle building supplement for meatheads and stuff like that, and, and that's just not the case. Like I said, there's a ton of other benefits, and I'm just scratching the surface on them. There's a lot of research on it. It's the most research performance enhancing supplement that there is. It's cheap. You know, you could buy pure creatine monohydrate pretty cheap. Uh, if you're worried about absorption and things like that, again, I cover that in the other video that's linked. So I really recommend it for two reasons. Um, in total, one is if you want to get the performance enhancing benefits, you can get them two at a minimum to bring you up to normal levels to lower the stress on your body for endogenous production and plus to get all those other benefits from it. If you have any other questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section or video of the video or blog. I'm more than happy to answer them. If you like the video, you can click below. I appreciate that. Um, also, you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.